and those hips. The competitor at the bottom not letting that happen. Managing to attack the back here and apply potentially his own Jujigatami. This is back and forth action here. Unable to secure it. Trying to go for the Osoto. Doesn't manage to get it, but keeps rolling forward with it. That forward movement does apply. But now he's, he finds himself in a uh, rather disadvantaged position here as his opponent is uh, attacking the back, attempting an armbar. Ref stops it. We've got uh, Gagnon White and Grant in blue. Gagnon is up by a point here. Mat number one. Gagnon is working for the Osikoma here for the pin. Will he able to hold on? Potentially no. The ref waves it off. Good escape by Grant. But guess what? Gagnon wants to gagne. And he's on top of this situation. Not granting Grant any opportunities here. But Grant manages to counter that and roll with his own pin here. Scar fold down. We're under two minutes here. Can he hold on to this? Grant certainly needs the point there. He's got uh, he's got a point. This match is tied. He gets the full leap on. Grant granted himself the full leap on there by managing to remain and then hold that uh, Osekome pin. Congratulations to Grant. Great effort by Gagno. Sur le tapis 3, on mat 3. First round for the under 63 kilos. En blanc, du Canada, Greta. Watching the replay Wallace. here. En bleu, du Canada, Laurence Biron. Beautiful throw by Gagno. Gets the Wazari. Attempts to go for the pin. That doesn't work out, does it? Great effort nonetheless. Okay, up next we've got Luca Ridal from Argentina versus uh, Polikov from Canada. We spoke to Luca Ridal yesterday. Actually put an interview. Uh, we interviewed him and he mentioned that he's here to get the gold. Last year he got the bronze. And uh, this year he's determined to get his gold. He's ranked number two. Managed to score Wazari there. Looking for that choke. Moving rather confidently here. He's got the Osekome. Very calm, cool, and focused uh, Luca Ridao. Doesn't seem to get too excited. He's here for that gold medal. Luca Ridao gets it. All the way from Argentina, as I mentioned before, we've got competitors competitors here from Argentina, Canada, Jamaica, Le Mexico, Gagnon, Portugal, Le Puerto Argentina Rico, Russia, and Togo. Luca Congrats to Luca Ridao. I think we'll be seeing more and more of him, obviously. I'm just seeing a shot here of the other mats, uh, the action in the other mats. You're watching us live here on JudoCanada.tv. This is the 2019 Canada Cup. Today's competition is the cadet competition, the cadet portion that is. The Pan American Cup 2019 here in Montreal. All right, looks like we've got a Canadian versus an American. Canadian in blue, American in white here. American being coached by Jimmy Pedro, I believe. Yeah, that's Jimmy Pedro there. Former Olympian on the American team.
Ref calls for a break. Taking him right in the middle, the mats. So the Canadian is uh, Colin, and the American is Bakhtiar, who's up by a point. He's got Collins back here, but he's repositioning, trying to get out of a uh, half guard here. Gets out, but uh, Collins scrambles out. The ref calls him to stand up. So back to yours up by a point here. And he's looking rather uh, quite confident. Very aggressive here with the pace. He's, he appears to be dictating the pace of, uh, of this match here. We're under, two, we're under three minutes. So let that be our winner. I'm at one. Colin can't score. commit Robin to that throw to there. Leaves himself vulnerable to um, back to your here. This is in the minus 55 kilo division. Back to your working potentially for some uh, Ashiwaza technique there. Gets that big grab. There you go, Sumigashi attempt. Can't convert that into a point, but uh, clearly he's converting for. A potential choke here. So Possibly a choke. Again, Under referee stands them back up. We're seeing him uh, Canada, repeatedly Owen attack Vancouver. on that same side there. In blue. Trying to from counter Canada, Ammer, from Abdel a choke Rahim. to a pin. And the referee breaks him up. crowd here really excited for another match that's happening uh, on a different mat here. Lots of teams out here from different provinces, from coast to coast to coast, from, from Newfoundland all the way to uh, BC. A lot of provincial team spirit. Bakhtiar here secures that big grip, goes again for the Sumi guy. She can't fully execute it with rolls potentially to a bone arrow choke here. No, has back control. Again, referee stands him up. We're seeing essentially the same series of, uh, of, of attacks here, same flow from Bakhtiar. Colin gets another Shido here. Beautiful Uchimata by Bakhtiyor. Hopefully we'll get to see the replay on that. Colin was attempting to go for the throw and he got countered there. Great effort by Colin, but the, the, the win obviously goes to Bakhtiyor from the United States. Check out the replay here, Larry, please. Beautiful, Uchimara. Done with conviction. All right, up next we've got uh, Canadian versus an American. We've got um, Chris Tomo versus Castro. Chris Tomo, excuse me, versus Castro. Chris Tomo in white, the American versus Castro, the Canadian, in blue.
Castro goes to Shido on that. Kustomo committing right there for Uchimara. Gets the pawn. Crystallizes the, the opportunity, the moment, and executes that uh, Kristomo. The American wins it. Again, both of these competitors, uh, Kristomo and Poliktar, are uh, being coached by Jimmy Pedro, whom we may get to interview later on today. All right, up next, we've got Canadians fighting each other. We've got Andreas in white and Stang in blue. Still in the under 55 kilo weight division. All right, Andreas in white and Stang in blue. Stang appears to be the taller opponent. Let's see if he could use that to his advantage here. Longer legs here, trying to go for Ashiwada, but guess what? He gets uh, countered there by Andras, who manages to get uh, a Soto Makikomi combination there. Beautiful leap on by Andras. And there I thought that uh, Stang would use his, uh, his length there, but the shorter opponent uses not only his length, but perfect timing and power to, uh, to execute that beautiful leap on there. So we've got an American here, Martin versus a Canadian, Bertrand. We're getting a wide shot here of the entire, uh, all the mats and all the action that's happening here. All right, so Martin in white from the US, Bertrand in blue from Canada. Both these guys moving very, very quick here. Bertrand trying to turn Martin over. Can he get him over here? That Osekomi pin there. Martin trying to bridge over. But Bertrand won't let that happen here. He's stretching out the arm trying to secure. But no, guess what? Martin manages to get out while Bertrand's working for an armbar here. Great effort by uh, the American or Martin. Took a lot of effort to bridge out of that, a lot of power. And he's still in the game here. Three minutes left as Bertrand attempts to go for the throw. Can't get it. Still has head control here. Control the head, you control the body. Looks like he may be going for Juju Gatami here. He's setting it up here, but Martin is definitely not going to allow that to happen again. Oh, ref calls uh, Mate as Martin was uh, trying to go for the attack and he gets the Shido on that. Bertrand overextended himself there and Martin got to, was able to spin out of it. Judo Canada tient à remercier ses partenaires de retour pour cette deuxième Coupe Canada. Le gouvernement du Canada, le gouvernement du Québec, la Ville de Montréal et Tourisme Montréal, Essim, Savi, Compression EC3D et Atashita International. You're watching the 2019 Canada Cup live on JudoCanada.tv. 
The stream is being brought to you by tvgo.ca. Our sponsors include the Federal Government of Canada, Provincial Government of Quebec, City of Montreal, as well as Tours in Montreal, TKNL, EC30, Savvy, and Atashda, as well as eSIM. Almost uh, coming to under a minute here. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Martin's got two Shitos. Referee asking him to uh, fix his uh, judo gi here. Martin trying to go for the Osoto. Taller opponent here, but uh, he better watch out as his opponent has his back here. Bertrand's trying to lift him. Your Nagy potentially here. Will he able to generate enough power? No. As Martin was countering that lift by extending his hip and leg forward there. That additional length abled, uh, enabled Martin to essentially block Bertrand's lift. Okay, we're at 55 seconds here. Again, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Martin's definitely uh, trying to... Bertrand is definitely trying to execute uh, here. He's trying to bring that positive judo. Continuous attacks. The taller opponent, Martin, is uh, again working for the Osoto. He's trying to stretch that leg across. He's got the grips here, but... Doesn't get it as Martin, as Bertrand counters and lands that uh, clean Nippon on uh, Martin, who again overextended himself there. He did somewhat have the grip, but that uh, overstretch on, on the leg put him off balance. And as he turned, Bertrand found the opportunity to, to counter that, finishing it via Nippon. Congratulations to Bertrand, who moves on. The Canadian beating the American here in Montreal. Got 121 competitors here. The Montreal Cadet Pan American Cup 2019. To get a wide shot of the mats. We're moving on here to the under 73 category. Canadian versus Canadian. Fourno in white. Semenyuk in blue. Working for the grips here. I get the feeling both of these competitors are familiar with each other. Both being Canadians, I'm sure they've competed against one another many a time. Furno is uh, slightly taller than Semenyuk. Canada, Yuri 
You'll see Semenyuk already kind of uh, breathing a little heavily here. Started very aggressive from the get-go. Only 60 seconds in. There you go, beautiful. Sorry there. Clean Epon for Semenyuk. Sur le tapis 3, on mat 3. Check out the replay here. Over 70 kilos, 75. He gets him up, securing the grip, committing forward of that throw. Beautiful execution by Semenyuk, who moves on here. Up next, we've got uh, God Blue and White versus Bachador in blue. I've seen Bachador compete at the Elite Nationals 2019, I believe he's of... Uh, Mongolian uh, descent here in Canada. Going in right away for Uchimara. Executes it and finishes the match in under 17 seconds. Wasting no time and no energy. Bats for Golden score for the under 48 quarter final. Grip and throwing. Let's check out the replay here. Finding that uh, appropriate timing and executing as he sees fit. Getting that nice, fantastic throw here. All right, up next we got Davis from Jamaica versus uh, Schenk from Canada. Davis in white, Schenk in blue. Jamaican working some as she was a technique, but Shank with his own sweep there. Ooh. Speaking of Ashiwaza, Shank Shank that uh, sweep effectively. It sends Davis home. Great effort by Davis, of course, but uh, Shank wins it. Let's check out the replay here. Okay, maybe not. Oh yeah, there it is. Seeing here, Shank repositions the grip on the gi and then follows up with generating enough power to, to execute that sweep right on time. Up next, we've got Floyd versus Garan. Two Canadians, Floyd in white versus Garan in blue. In blue from Canada, Sophie I will be interviewing others uh, during the day, having them come on and do some commentary as well. So, you're watching us live on Judo Canada TV. My name is Germami here at the 2019 Canada Cup. Floyd in white versus Garan in blue. Garan trying to break that grip here. Well, Floyd was possibly, I think, trying to extend that leg for Seri Otoshi, potentially, or Losoto. But uh, Garan just tossed him off and like, get off me, man. Let's see if he can uh, redirect that sort of uh, power for an Epon here. Floyd going in for the Uchimara. Got out, not letting that happen. Under 73 kilos here. Both uh, competitors looking very strong here, moving with a lot of power. Trying to secure that leg for the Osoto. Doesn't manage to get the throw, but in good position here, Floyd is. 
And stretch him out here, roll him. Get back mount. The referee stands them back. Hoping to see plenty of new Waza action here at the Coupe Canada, the Canada Cup. Almost under two minutes here. Who will it be, Garant or Floyd? Garant repositioning his grip behind the head here. Potentially a stronger grip. Again, trying to go for the Uchimara and then Soto Tsurugoshi. But uh, the combination there didn't really work, but uh, Floyd gets the Shido on that. I think Caron's happy with that. Under two minutes here. The ref is going to wave off that Shido Floyd and give it to Garan. Garan here trying to, both trying to fight for, for the grips here. As we're almost under 90 seconds or 80 seconds here. So the debitoire on mat three. A lot of energy here being absorbed, as you can see, fatigue building up here. We're both competitors, possibly more on Floyd. Now it looks like uh, Garon uh, needs to go see a medic here. Might have a cut, might be bleeding. Uh, medic will address that. Probably nose, bloody nose, or lip. On the flip side, of course, this uh, gives them a nice break. I'm sure they, they both need that break. They've been going pretty hard here the last three minutes. Every second counts. Every breath matters. <laughs> Look at the intensity on Floyd's face here. Intensity in that... Uh, knowing that, you know, we're under a minute here. Same for Garan, of course. Both competitors here want to win this match under a minute. Garan's got the Shido. Secure that grip here, going in for the Osoto, but not Osoto, Uchi, excuse me. Who wants it more And these, you know, the further you go into this match here, obviously, a zero, zero, anything can happen here. We're under 25 seconds. Floyd's got a good grip here. Trying to get the lapel, reposition the lapel and then attack. But Garan pushes him over, not letting that happen. Very good match here between two very strong competitors negating each other's efforts here. Clashing. Uh, looks like it's going to be ending here. I'll have to go to Golden Score. The breathing's getting heavier here for both Garan and Floyd. Floyd with that grip on the back there. Again, trying to set that Uchimara. 
that strong grip from the back, but Garang using his hips to block that entry or trying to counter that entry. Interesting movement by, by Floyd here. Trying to create an opportunity for furthering his attacks and his entries. And he gets Shido here. He got on gets Shido, that is. Someone in the crowd yells, Shido blue. It looks like the referee agreed with that. But Garan's got two Shidos. And Floyd has none. Golden score here. Floyd was floating the idea of the uh, Mashiwaza technique. We haven't seen much. We haven't seen many sweeps from Floyd. He's been mainly trying to go for the Uchi. Able to get Garan down to the ground. Not a clean throw by any means, but uh, good enough effort here. Trying to isolate that arm potentially for a Garami, no, going for the Juji. Be nice to finish via submission here in Golden Score. The referee stands them back up. Garan's in this fight. He's here to fight, not giving up on himself. Same could be said about Floyd here. Both competitors are in Golden Score. They're both given 110% here at the 2019 Canada Cup. Floyd was stringing the attacks over and over. And uh, Garon's, I think Garon's might be getting, uh, I think the fatigue might be catching up with Garon. Obviously with Floyd too, but more so with Garon. It seems more visual. You can see it in his face here. As he's exerting a lot of energy, having to deal with a very, you know, offensively based Floyd. Oh, ref's asking him to fix up his uh, key. It looks like it. Uh, this be the end. Shido for Garan. Floyd wins it. Great match by both competitors. Really enjoyed that one. Great effort. But uh, Floyd wins that one there. The volume of attacks and uh, compounded by the fact that he's dictating the pace overall put him over. You're watching here a wide shot of the, the mats. Plenty of matches happening in other mats here. Now we're going to the round robin for the plus 90 kilos. Size and weight does matter according to the laws of physics. <laughs> and you best believe the laws in physics and judo are uh, best friends. They're BFFs, folks. They play with each other. They're all interplay with each other. And uh, if you're a fan of physics, you're definitely a fan of, uh, of judo because judo is physics in action. So it's exciting to see the heavier competitors fight, although sometimes I find they're not as uh, quick and, and dynamic as lighter opponents. But then again, it depends on, on the competitor, right? I mean, the more weight you carry, the, the less the probability you'll be as quick as someone who weighs, you know, a quarter of your weight, or not a quarter, a third, uh, you know, two-thirds your weight. All right, so we've got uh, 
Hudson versus Arba here. Arba in blue, Hudson in white. Plus 90 kilos here. You're watching us live here at the 2019 Canada Cup. Hudson in white, Arba in blue. Both brown belts here. Arba trying to go for Nuchimara there, doesn't get it. Moving rather slow. I mean, maybe he's starting slow, but he'll finish fast here. Trying to work that pin here, securing the pin. A lot of weight being exerted here on Hudson. Arba looks pretty darn comfortable there. Moving nice and slow, knowing where he needs to be to counter any uh, leverage, leverage entries from, uh, from, from Hudson here. And there you have it. Arba wins it via Ipon, the Osekome here. Very good positioning. Moves slowly, but moves efficiently. It's not a race for, uh, for anyone here. Great way to win it and conserve that energy as Arba moves on in, uh, in the tournament here. The Montreal Cadet Pan American Cup 2019 has over 121 competitors from 10 countries all over the world. More than 10 countries, that is, from Togo, Russia, Puerto Rico, Portugal, Mexico, Jamaica, Canada, Argentina, the U.S. Make sure you visit Judo Canada on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There'll be plenty of uh, content going up there throughout the weekend, throughout the competition. The winner, moving on to the under 52 semifinal from Canada. All right, Anna up next, Zitareva. we've got two Canadians, Gagnon versus Lesenberger. Gagnon White, Lesenberger in blue. Back to the minus 50 kilograms here, the quarterfinals. We've seen Gagnon fight before. Gagnon trying to go under there with uh, doesn't work here. Goes on top. Has, does, yes, he does have the pin. He's got the Osikomi. Can he hold on? Will Lisenberger scramble out of this one? Doesn't look like Gagnon is in any trouble here. Gagnon's got it. Gagnon gets the Ipon. Excellent position there. Knowing where his opponent was trying to, uh, to roll over and essentially negating that with his own repositioning and redistribution of, uh, his weight. Well done by Gagnon. Good effort by Lisenberger. Lots of judo action going on in all the different mats here. But up next, we've got a Mexican versus an American. Ramirez from Mexico in white versus uh, Bakhtiar in blue from the U.S. We've seen Bakhtiar earlier on. Versus the Mexican judoka Ramirez. Sur le tapis de on mat 2. Quart de finale chez les moins de 55 kilos, under 55 quarterfinals, in white, from Mexico, Jose Ramirez. In blue, from USA, Amin Bactior. Bactior given sufficient amount of time there to work from the back, but I uh, wasn't able to convert much. Back on their feet here. Let's see what Ramirez has to offer. He's trying to secure the grip here. Going for an attempted Korean Serenaji. Does not work. Great effort though. Again, back to your has him has him by the back. Back to yours got him by the back.
We are watching the 2019 Canada Cup live on judocanada.tv here at the Pierre Charbonneau Centre. Lots of uh, fans and supporters in attendance here. Watching the cadets here, that's the U18 judokas from all over the world compete here. Wow. What happened there, ref? Giving it to Bakhtiyor, who's able to counter Ramirez. Rosario awarded. Bakhtiyor feeling confident here as he tries to move forward with that throw here. Doesn't get it. But Ramirez might be in mount position here, potentially for an Osekomi. Has his back here. Could he be working a choke? No. Hey. This referee in the, allowing a lot of new was at time, which is fantastic. Oh, yes. Okay. There it was. We just saw back to yours, uh, Wazari. Back to yours got his hands in the air there. I don't know if he's dancing or feeling uh, happy for the moment. Either way, back to your. Whatever works for you, maybe he's uh, feeling the energy. A lot is at stake here for these competitors. They all need to win, they all want to win. And whatever methodology they need to employ, they, they will. Jimmy Pedro, of course, coaching uh, back to your. Sure. It's okay. Was he? No. Okay. Just trying to invite a uh, someone to join us on commentary here. All right, back to your. He's going for Nuchimara there. Can he commit? Oh no, sorry, Ramirez was. But now back to your, in blue. Has got him by the back hit again, folks. Back to back, by the back, by back to your. Believe that. All right, we're under two minutes here. Back to yours up by a point. By Wazari. Working the grips. Trying to execute the throw. Showing, showing that commitment to uh, you know continu continuously push forward here. We haven't seen much of that from Ramirez. He's been on the receiving end of quite the offense. Yo, yo. You get him. Ipon by Bakhtiyor here. I believe it was a Sumigaishi. I turned around for a second and Bakhtiyor, boom, got the Sumigaishi. And check out the replay. Trying to get some of these competitors to come and talk to us here. Don't think that was a Sumigaishi, folks. Pardon me. Whatever that was, got him the upon. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada boom. Moving on here. Okay, we've got uh, Chris Otomo. Yes, Chris Otomo, the American in white versus Belanger in blue, the Canadian. Chrysostomo, that's how you pronounce it, Chrysostomo in white versus Belanger in blue. Man. 
All righty. We've seen uh, Christos Tomo execute a beautiful Uchimara previously. I'm sure that... Uh, I'm sure he's feeling confident going into this one against Belanger. Immediately going for the Juji. But Belanger ain't going to let that one happen. Under 55 kilos, both competitors are quick, fast, flexible, and agile. Du Canada, en blanc, Taylor Althaus. En bleu, Christian Stomo, the brown belt, versus Bélanger, the black belt. Trying to secure that arm, so that grip for the arm bar here, but uh, Belanger gripping his own arm, ensuring that Chrysos to Tomo doesn't get it. No, sir, you don't get it. Belanger ain't gonna let that one happen. One minute there, just passed by. Lots of action in that one minute. minute. Lots of movement. See so much more offense with the lighter legs. Continuous, relentless attacks. Back-to-back -back attacks. Trying to turn him over there. Belanger is trying to turn him over. Potentially work the submission game here. But uh, no, referee stands him up. Haven't seen many submission finishes here as far as Nawaza goes. We've seen a lot of good throws, a, good, a lot of good Ipons with Nazaris. Belanger gets that uh, Shido. trying to go in with his offense here doesn't get it leaving himself uh, potentially exposed here to no the referee stands him back up I've noticed that some refs are more prone to you know call the competition uh, to, to call the competitor to call them you know competitors up right after Tomenage attempt by Chris Tomo some refs allow more Niwaza than others. I mean, it's generally as consistent as, as they can, but... Uh, oh, we got an... No, no. It's good to see lots of Niwaza, personally. I think more and more people are, are, are fans of... Of course, they're fans of throws, but it's good to see some good uh, Niwaza action in judo. Belanger's got a Shido. Chrysostomo doesn't. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. We're under two minutes here. I can smell an Uchimara coming. No, attempted uh, Sumigaishi throw there. Grabbing the leg. Going right into guard. I think he's trying to dr bring him to some for some Niwaza action. As you can see, Chrysostomo's coach there, Jimmy Pedro, shaking his head, not very happy with this. Under 90 seconds left here. Can you get the, yes, got him over right there. He's got to get out of half guard here to work that uh, pin. Jose Come. Can he get it, folks? Can Belanger get it? Or Chris is Tomo going to block this one? Referee calls him to stand up here. We're literally under a minute, 59 seconds. The pace in this match has been really good, very consistent. Continuous action here. The Canada Cup, the 2019 edition. You're watching us live on judocanada.tv. Make sure you leave a comment, tell us what you think. Send us an email. We love reading your, your thoughts and your opinions. Check out Judo Canada on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. We're on it. Under 30 seconds left here. Who will it be, Chrysostom or Belanger? One Shiro apiece here. 
can tell both competitors are fired up. They, they're still in this. No signs of fatigue here, folks. No, sir. Yashiwaza Tech. The sweeps there. No, nothing, nothing happening. Five seconds left, you know. It only takes three seconds. It only takes a second. Anything can happen. All right, we're going to Golden Score. Off to Golden Score. You can see they're both ready to go, and the referees uh, stop that one rather quickly. Set them back in the middle. Both Chris Stomo and Belanger have come here to compete, folks. They both want to win, and they're going to give it their all. So Stomos went in for the shoulder throw over committed and Belanger swung on the other side there. Belanger manages to turn Chrysostom over. His leg is trapped. Kisostomo has him in half guard here. All right, ref's going to break them up. Start all over again. In blue, from Canada, Isabella Shepanski. You could see the intensity on, uh, and the focus that is on Belanger's uh, face, as well as Kisostomo's. Going in there potentially for Uchimata, no sir. Was working the Uchimata and then just dragged him down to the mat. Pulling proverbial guard. Going in for that Uchimata, transitioning to what attempted to, to be Tomonagi here. He swung over for a choke, but the ref stops it because the lapel, the gi, was over. The chin and not under. No cranks allowed USA. here, folks. Alexander Knopf. Belanger exerting a lot of power here, trying to potentially work his Osegomi. Osegomi, excuse me. It would be a great way to finish this match here. As neither opponent is uh, allowing each, either one of them to, to come in and with their with their touchy as a any throws. Belanger awarded yet another Shido. There you go. This is Stoma rolling there for the choke. I believe that's the artichoke. And he's got it! Belanger's got it with the artichoke. Bow and arrow choke. In blue, from Canada, Jiu Riley, Congratulations to Belanger, who finishes Chris Ostomo here in the Golden Score. Chris Ostomo, one Canada, hell of a grappler, one hell of a judoka. But Belanger takes it. Great match. Gotta love that relentless attack by both competitors here, as I mentioned. He found that position, rolled in with the bone arrow, the arty choke, as some people call it. Cranking that, boom. All right, we're moving on here to Jamaica. We've got Christopher in white from Jamaica and Andres in blue from Canada. Christopher, much taller than his opponent here. Moving around in circles here, dancing. Trying to go for the trip here. A lot of movement from uh, Christopher, generating a lot of potential uh, power, but also Lots of liabilities there with that forward movement as Andrews was able to take him down and convert that into a Wazari here. That's what took him down there. Hooking that leg and moving forward and falling. I think Andrews could tell that uh, Christopher was just spinning him in circles. 
generating a lot of movement, but uh, Andres knowing where he needed to be to convert uh, convert that takedown. So the tapir quart de finale des moins de 57 kilos, under 57 kilo quarterfinal. Obla, Canada, Alessandro Phoebe, Manuel. We've got competitors from all over. I think he's got him in a choke. He tried. Andres tried to apply. She was a technique here. Choking technique. Trying to isolate that arm potentially. For Udi Garami or an arm bar. Arm lock of sorts. We won't have enough time as the referee asks both competitors to stand back up here. All right. Manages to get that throw. Christopher was on his knees, and uh, Andres managed to get that. Uh, also, can attack his opponent on his knees. Continuous attacks from Andres enables him to finish his opponent here. Two back-to-back Rosaris -back making Ipon. Congratulations to Andres as he moves on. Great effort by Christopher from Jamaica. It's great to see the Jamaicans uh, here at the, at the Canada Cup, the Cadet Pan American Cup 2019. As I mentioned, we've got competitors from all over. From Argentina, Canada, Jamaica, Mexico, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Les Russia, Gagnon, Togo, as well as the United States of America. Canada, Norbert, Andras. Check out the replay here. On his knees, Christopher, and uh, no he sees the opportunity the under 57 for the Osoto. From USA, gets Skyler it. All right, up next, we've got uh, Canadian versus Canadian. We've got Gardner versus Bertrand. Bertrand in uh, blue, Gardner in white. Will Gardner be able to plant Bertrand in the middle? The tatamis here with an explosive throw, or Bertrand belt him across with his own uh, offensive here? Seeing a very serious looking Bertrand, very focused and serious. We've seen him compete earlier on. And, uh, Gardner as well, working that uh, Sur le tapis trois, on that three. technique or uh, sorry, Ashi. It's early in the morning, folks. I need a coffee, but this judo oh, action is exciting Canada, here. We're seeing uh, Bertrand trying to go in for the attack here yet again. Canada, Breaking the grip, Gardner. Again, attacking. His lead attack being, um, you know, foot sweep as an entry. Quart de finale chez les moins de 57 kilos, under 57 kilo quarter final. In white, from Canada, Kaylee Kuramoto. Fighting from Canada, in blue, Sarah Ikoski. Bertrand's going to try to turn him over. Referee stops that. Stops the ground action here. Bertrand listening to his coach very attentively here. A lot of advice being provided by the coaches on the sides. Oh. I think uh, Bertrand just let go of his breakfast there. Yeah, let go of his breakfast, and uh, I guess someone will uh, will get the mat uh, cleaned up here. And Gardner gets that. Uh, Le Moving on to semifinal for All right, we're seeing a lot of action on the other mat Canada, here. Corin Gardner. Oh, yeah. 
Seeing a lot of action here at the 2019 Canada Cup. Big shout out to our sponsors, the Government of Canada, the Gouvernement du Québec, the City of Montreal, Tourism Montreal, TKNL, EC30, Savvy, Atashta, and Eason. These are sponsors. This live stream is live stream is brought to you by TV Go. And uh, so far, we've seen a lot of great action here at the Canada Cup. Today's portion, of course, is the Cadet Pan American Cup. And uh, the cadets here, that's the U18 judokas, have uh, have come hard. Have come here from all over, all over the world, wanting to make that podium. Had a chance to speak to some of these competitors yesterday at the weigh-ins. A lot of them have uh, been training very hard and been focusing on how to, you know, improve their game. They're continuously trying to improve their, their judo and their overall athleticism and uh, their mental training as well as physical training. It takes a lot of commitment. A lot of them you mentioned. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to commit. And, and they're all committed. And they all train, of course, to compete. The frequency of competition for, for most is uh, at times really, really high and intense. So the level of dedication and commitment to, for these competitors is certainly there. And uh, it's great to see the, the judo action here at the Pierre Charbonneau Center. So I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can get some, some competitors here to talk. To talk here. Let me see who I can get. Uh, Excuse me. You want to come talk? You sure? Yeah. All right. People are, are shy out here, but I, I promise I will get you someone uh, to talk. Excuse me, sir. Are you a coach? You want to join in on the broadcast? Oh, no, you're busy. Okay. All right. How about uh, we're trying to get some coaches here to talk to us about their... Uh, We'll see who's available here as the crew's cleaning up the mats here, folks. Hey, look, man, it's early in the morning. You know, people eat breakfast in the morning and then they compete. And uh, we're seeing something better. Excuse me. Do you have time for a quick interview? Sorry? Okay, okay. Hey, uh, yo, can you get... Come, come. You have time for a quick interview? All right, perfect. We've got a uh, competitor here who's going to join us on the broadcast. So, yeah, yeah, we're on, we're on live right now. Yeah. So, tried to interview you yesterday. Something happened with the, with the audio. It didn't work, so that's why I want to interview you again. So, introduce yourself. Tell us your name. Uh, I'm Alexandra Lafort. Um, I'm a 70 kilo for Judo Canada. Right, and you're here at the, the Canada Cup. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling pretty good. Just finished my first match, uh, won that, and now I'm in finals. So Right on, right on. So how was your first match? L lead us through uh, from what you recall. Um, how did you win? Well, I had to get um, at the entrance point where you have your coach and everything. So I slapped myself in the face to wake myself up, listened to some music, danced a little. Got to loosen up. What music? Uh, what, what are you listening to? Uh, I listen to Eminem, okay. lots of uh, rap, actually. Uh, Mexican rap too because cool. I'm half Mexican okay. and um, yeah that tends to bump me up and then I went on the mat with my competitor my coach told me specifically do not reach for a throw I reached for the throw I still got the throw but uh, why, why would you elaborate as to why your coach would, uh, um, would say that so to reach for a throw it's uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, just yeah. no problem there you go. to reach for a throw uh, basically it's um, when you overextend and you put yourself off balance in order to get a throw, and uh, that leaves you open to be thrown yourself. Okay. So he was telling me not to overreach and to put myself off balance, and I did so, but uh, luckily the girl managed to circle, and um, uh, because of that, I was able to get myself back on balance, and then I got an epon uh, about six seconds. Wow. Yeah. That's I, awesome. It must feel good. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty great. Right on, right on. So you're moving on, you, you mentioned, to, to the finals? Yes. Do you know who you're uh, going to be going up uh, against? Yes, I'm fighting Bray Booth. I fight her a lot. She's okay. one of, uh, we're number one and two in Canada for 70 kilo. Okay. So um, we tend to fight each other quite a bit. And uh, we also to travel with each other a lot in competition. It's um, 
It's always interesting fighting her because we're actually friends. Okay. So uh, we tend to... Not when you're competing, though. Not when we're competing. When right. we're competing, we're definitely it's all not business. friends. Yes. Right. I have been multiple... I have given her multiple bruises, and, and I've given her one concussion, and she's wow. given me multiple bruises before. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and a knee problem. It's, it's an interesting relationship. <laughs> yeah, it's the nature of the beast. Do you have time to, to comment on some match? Or are you... Are you uh, um, I don't know if I'm qualified, but I mean... Oh, you are Cody me. You're qualified. You're, you're freaking competing here. So that is true. But if, if you have time, if you have I time. I do have time. Okay, perfect. Just fix your... Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, my go. God. I can hear you now. Falling over. I can hear you. Okay, now. there we go. So we're going to jump to uh, mat number two, and uh, we'll, we'll comment and we'll talk as we okay. go along. Yeah. And any time you, you need to, to run and, and prepare for... Actually, my competition is at 2 o'clock. Okay, all right. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, I'll probably be warming up around 1. That's about as far as that's going to go. Okay, and what time is it now? 10? Oh, it's 10.30. Yeah, okay. we've got time. <laughs> Good, yes, we've got time. Yeah. So it's great to, to have you on, and I'll, I'll ask you questions because you're, you're a competitor. And, uh, yeah, no problem. I think you know most of these... Uh, Canadian. Uh, actually, uh, fun fact, because I do live in Texas, I know a good amount of the Americans, too. Okay. And then uh, my friend, uh, who actually lives in Texas with me, is here, and he's from Mexico, and he's okay. competing for Mexico. Well, so Ramirez? Uh, no, uh, another one, Emiliano Saucedo. Okay, he hasn't I haven't seen yet. him, no. How m what uh, division? What, he got a bye because he's ranked, uh, I think, like 15th in the world or something. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he's a very hard worker. Hmm. All right. Up. Oh, there, no, that's... There he is. Uh, yes, oh, that is him. Emiliano. That is him. Perfect. Your friend, me, the Mexican versus the Canadian, uh, Semenyuk. Uh, do you know Semenyuk? I do not. Actually, he might be an Ontario kid, but I don't believe so. I think I think he uh, I think he's uh, maybe Alberta. No? Alberta? Uh, yeah. In that case, no. Alberta has a very large team. Yeah, they they're yeah. always coming in strong. They're always coming in with uh, guns a blazing. Crew, yeah. BC and Alberta are definitely the largest competitors. Um, and Quebec, of course. Quebec oh, and Quebec. Yeah. Always bringing it. They're always come. Well, we're we're in their home area. That's so. it. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, let's uh, let's jump right into it here. Okay, so um, Emiliano is a righty. He tends to bend over a lot, but he's uh, very strong with his stance. Ema Emiliano in white and uh, Semenyuk in in blue yeah. here. Semenyuk seems to be placing his feet together, which is leaving him open for some foot sweeps, but he's getting low. How would yeah, you describe uh, Sosendo's uh, style? Um, it seems like he doesn't want to bend over, but he's having to to break uh, Emiliano's double appels grips. Mm. Um, I can't actually tell his style. Oh, it seems he also wants to do. Um, uh, well, that's a throw that you use when you have double grips. It's often used to break the grips because right. even if you don't throw it, you manage to get into Nawaza and then you can just reset. Mm -hmm. So that was a very tactical approach. Um, but I don't I can't really tell because Winner. Emiliano's Moving forcing him to get low even if he doesn't want to just to break USA, those double sleeves. Mm -hmm. See, he's controlling and turning him. Does he have a wrestling background? Uh, Emiliano actually does. He yeah. wrestled in uh, Texas and he placed, I think, first in state for... Wow. Uh, in Texas? In junior varsity. Yeah, in Jeez. Texas. Wow. In Texas, we have a large a amount of people that wrestle, for like sure. a lot of people that wrestle. And I think I don't know how I did this state because I I quit wrestling so I didn't I don't. Oh, wrestle. you wrestled as well. Yes, okay. I did. I would see him at tournaments, so that's how I, uh, I know how he does. Hmm. Um, but I think he went to proper state, which is a uh, varsity state. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if he placed or not. His brother got first though. Maybe that's why he's always his stance. Yeah, is his brother uh, is competing in the Grand Prix this weekend. Oh wow! Yes. For Mexico. For Mexico, yes. Uh, Geronimo Sosito. What uh, weight division? Uh, I believe it's 100 kilo. Oh, wow. Or no, 90. 90, 90 kilo. Of course, the Montreal Grand Prix is happening here in Montreal on July uh, 5th to the 7th. Many people worldwide, are, are many fans are descending to Montreal for, for this major Grand Prix. And of course, the, the world's best judokas will be competing in the beautiful city of Montreal. Yep. It's a great opportunity for Canadian athletes. Big time, and for for judo in Canada as a whole. Now, y you live in in the U.S., but you're you're Canadian, yeah? Yes, yeah. I'm only Canadian. What's it like living in the U.S. and, and uh, um, training judo? What's what's the judo culture like in, in the state, the big state of Texas? Ironically enough, uh, Canadian judo is 
actually Gabriel probably bigger Lee. than it is in the United States. Um, the United Gabriel States is just so and spread Blue out. Jackson, mm -hmm. um, and it's mainly only club judo. Like, you don't right. have what do we, the opportunities you have in Canada where you have um, teams that will help you pay for your visits, and there's whole, like, organized um, trips. The only project that we have that co even comes close to the level of organization that Canada has right now is Project 2024. Right, and, and, and tell us about that. I saw a few competitors wearing that shirt. There. I'm not very qualified to talk about it. It's mostly a thing that occurs for, like, the people that live in the northern states. Right. So New Jersey, uh, New York, right. all that area, they, they have very heavy Project 2024. Mm -hmm. But if you live in California and your trainings are in New York, it's kind of difficult for that to, to work out. Hmm. Um, but... It's, it's definitely caught late. a lot of athletes have good opportunities. I've seen them go to a lot of big tournaments, which uh, before would have been near impossible to make unless you had Money. the funds to pay your way all sure. uh, the whole time, which is very difficult because you're really forking over, I don't know, 10000 a year, oh. plus the geese, plus whatever other transport you need for local tournaments in order to qualify. It's a real money drainer. For sure, and I mean, this is where... Whoa. It seems, yeah, because if Emiliano's gripping, it's causing him to be really defensive. So he's gotten two Shitos now. I'm a tad biased here. Are you? <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> I trained with this guy for the past uh, two months every day. Wow. Yeah. So it's a small, from what you're describing, the judo community in the U.S. is small. It's small. Spread out. It's spread out. Spread out. So everybody, so like, in Texas, I know everybody in Texas. Oh, there you go. He, he won yeah. Dimitri Gamkrilizzi. Everybody in Texas. I know everybody in uh, California. Um, don't really know the northern areas. Most people can tell you, like, everybody from their area, but when it comes to outside that, it's mm -hmm. kind of shady. And uh, plus the fact that uh, unlike uh, Canada judo, America judo actually has about four organizations that will Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting. They all have yeah. different nationals, and they all have different point systems. Which makes it even harder with I the I can only wise. imagine, yeah, yeah, that, that so uh, yeah. fragmentation yeah. is yeah. I, really yeah. I just love Canada. En blanc, du Canada Munchkin Badorge. All right, now we're seeing Bachdor versus Miku. I hope Michu. I'm pronouncing that right. Badorge is actually uh, Mongolian. Mongolian, right. Yeah. Again, for the Uchimara, oh, we've seen we him uh, use that effectively in the previous match, winning literally, I think, Should six seconds. One, I, I think, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's two back to back Uchi. Yeah. Mara for for Bachdor. How do you pronounce his name? Bachdor. Du Canada, Bachdor. 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 Okay. My uh, sensei is Mongolian. Okay. Uh, the last time I brought her with her, she was like giving me a whole story on um, how to pronounce it. Yeah, the final, quarter final. Mongolian judo Under is very uh, dominant internationally. Obviously, a big powerhouse. Uh, Cana uh, du Canada. Judo, yeah. My uh, sensei Blanc. is Victor Goujon Gazé, third place Olympian for uh, Mongolia. Du Canada. Wow. Yeah. Uh, is your sensei here? Uh, he is not. He's actually uh, coaching my t other teammate in uh, the American Nationals currently. Oh, yeah. oh so the Nationals are happening now? The, the American Nationals are happening in California right okay. this weekend. Okay, right. Wow. Yeah, so he's there. Hmm. And uh, his wife is in Texas, too. And she was fifth place in the world for 70 plus. I mean, 78 kilo. So you're getting some really good high-level uh, co coaching, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the most difficult part is training partners, which are hard to come by. Because mm. at the end of the day, judo, even though it is a one-person sport, you need to have other a solid people team. to push you. Yeah. For sure. So we've got uh, Shank here in blue versus Gugon Gaz. I hope I'm pronouncing oh. that. Hmm? How do you pronounce it? Um, I do not know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, Gugon Gaz. Him, uh, what do you call him? Bog no, it's not Bogdan. Oh, my God. I know him, but I don't remember his name, his first name. Victor, that's it. And then uh, Emil is BC. Okay. Emil Schenk in blue. And, uh, oh! Quart de finale, moins de 66 kilos sur le tapis 3. From Canada. In white, Zacharia Shirzad. Fighting in blue. From Canada, Thomas Sparks. Oh, no. Can you hear it now? Okay, so this this is yours here. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So th that was a wasari. Um, for a second, I thought it would have been an epon, but. Um, no, he didn't really have much control, and Emil still managed to flip onto his stomach. Though it seems there's 
he got some sort of nosebleed. And yeah. he gets a lot of those. Yeah, someone uh, let go of their breakfast earlier. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I did not. Ironically, in that same site, vicinity of the shit. There's usually one mat that's cursed. Ah, bah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt. One of the mats on that four. Wow. Well, Matt 2 is getting a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff today. But uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see what, uh, do you know Shank, yeah? Yeah, I do. Uh, he went to a few competitions internationally with me. How would you describe him as a judoka? As a judoka, he's definitely a long-legged player. So he's not he's not really prone to doing drops. He's a lot of uchimadas. Um, mm. I've seen him hit a... Um, a suplex one time. Oh, no way. Yeah. Like a... <laughs> I don't know if he... Like he hit, Uranagi style? Like Uranagi. He hit wow. Uranagi. Um, it... Not necessarily like feet all the way, like you go head to the mat, but right. uh, he picked the guy up and dropped him on his back, so... Ipon. Awesome. I hope um, to see some of those lifts here today. Yeah. With suplexes. Big like fan so of those. Is. See, he's trying to grab that uh, sleeve over by the elbow in order to get the sode. See, because he's got long arms, so he doesn't have to... Yeah, see? Uh, yeah. Oh, you, you got a lot of fans here <laughs> wa walking by. And, uh, uh, yeah. One of my friends. <laughs> What's the atmosphere like in the back with everyone uh, warming up and, and, and competing? Is it a friendly mood? Is it a... I mean, everyone here comes to win, obviously, but it uh, um, seems like there's... Oh! Like there's there's a, oh, his knee. Right, we'll check out the replay. You, you'll lead us through the replay on that. Yeah. Uh, if you hurt his knee or not. He's a tough guy. The victory goes to Google and Gaz. Which uh, province is he from? Uh, Quebec. Quebec. He failed the leg. He just kept driving forward? Was yeah, just kept driving forward. Huh. Yeah, what's the mood like in, in the back as far as... Uh, um, in the stands, it's pretty quiet, but in the place where the warm-ups are, there's like a fine line because you have to... There's people you can talk to, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to start trying to talk to somebody who's trying to warm up and focus on their match. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely interesting because you're friends with everybody, but depending on what team they are, you can't um, talk to them because they might be not rooting for you. Or right. <laughs> they'll even tell you. I was just uh, talking to some of them, and they're like, oh, yeah. Um, Alex, I mean, you're fighting my teammate, so I hope she wins, but good luck. So wow, wow. <laughs> it's kind of a bit of a paradox when it comes to people that you uh, see all the time and you're friends with, but they also are friends with people you're going to fight. Right. So a small community as well. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows everybody. Mm. So that's another thing. You can't, you can't really make enemies if you're going to see somebody every single day. Like, right. uh, I, I, I honestly find it much more convenient to be like nice to the people I'm going to fight because at the end of the day, we're just here to make each other better. Um, and I don't see a point in like starting a mean rivalry with somebody that I'm going to see every single other month. Well, th that makes uh, you know sense. It's very practical, of course. Are there a lot of rivalries? Uh, um, without getting into you know whatever well, the details, th are there? Yeah, I'm not going to name any names, but there's definitely people. Why not? Because no, <laughs> <laughs> they will throw me into a wall. Um, <laughs> You'll throw them. Come on, you're competitive. No, That's true. Yeah. Yeah, um, rivalries. T tell us about the, the role of rivalries. In with that. rivalries, uh, it's kind of like an unspoken thing. I mean, you don't want to carry it past the mat, but sometimes it does happen where, you know, if you're fighting somebody and you get a little angry at them, you might hit them, then they'll hit you back, and then it can escalate. Um, I mean, just another tournament, there is a time, uh, there's like videos that we have from judo where even though it's a very respectful sport, some people will just break out and start fighting each other, like For punching. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's happened. I, I've heard of that happening, especially mm -hmm. at uh, training, like at at seminars or or, or, or what, what have you people especially they, they get so mm -hmm. riled up they get so competitive yeah right? and some people it, that's the thing with competitors some people take it very personally so instead of thinking of it as like okay we're fighting on the mat then off it you have to be 
back to normal. Some people will try to make themselves imagine like punching them in the face. Like it just whatever makes it so that they're ready to fight. Mm -hmm. And then when you have that much adrenaline, it's really easy for you to bring emotions into it. And either people start crying, people get angry, people throw fists. Like it it can get really crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they might not be like, okay, that was the match. They didn't mean to punch me in the face. They might be like, oh my God, how dare she? And then it just escalates. The drama continues. Here we've got uh, Heitman in white versus Floyd in blue. We saw Floyd earlier today put on a, a, a great match. Almost oh, under two no. minutes here. Try to throw with one hand. Do, would you advise against that throwing? Uh, yeah, uh, especially if you if you really just have the the lapel and you don't have your sleeve hand you Mm. can't get any of the torque you need for nuchimata and people will just take you back like you just did and uh, you just kind of either fall on your stomach or you're going to fall on your back and they uh, counter you so what's the reasoning for even trying with with one hand is that just uh, it's just kind of like bold or um, i don't think he meant to do it most Ah. like some people will try but they'll do it with the belt um Mm. but when you have with the um the collar grip it's just really difficult and usually like i do it sometimes and i just forget that i have to grab the sleeve hmm. so it's just spur of the moment right uh, yeah everything in judo is just one second hmm. thing you strategize and train beforehand but it's really hard to to fight and strategize at the same time because then you're just you're just standing there trying to think out what you're going to do next and by that time they've already thrown you or they're already moving in that sort in those sorts of situations when you're on the mat and you're competing and so do you hear the crowd do you hear your coaches more importantly what what, for you personally what what for me personally i do not hear my coaches the only time i will hear them is if i turn and look at them um and that's about it like I, I can hardly hear anybody when I'm fighting because that's the only thing. Only thing I'm focused on is the fighting. So you zone all that out. I that zone out it out, and I've, I've actually De- deliberately struggled. or you, you I don't even know. It's not. Hmm. It's not deliberate. Before, when you when you're on the like scraping your feet on the mat, trying to get sweat off, like you're about to go on, you can still hear them. Like you can hear people cheering for you, or you can hear people cheering for your opponent, or you can hear your parents screaming in the background. But then as soon as you step on the mat, it's just all you think about is the ref bowing in. And then, what's your first grip going to be? Hmm. Yeah, nice grip break. Are you familiar with uh, Floyd? Um, I've Heitman? seen him around. I've seen a lot of people around, right. but there's some people I just I haven't. Sorry, I'm to. asking you uh, if oh, you know no, everyone. It's okay. Um, I know of most people, but uh, some people you just don't interact with. Often. That's Cohen, actually. I am familiar with him, Cohen Heitman. Where's he from? Which province? Ontario. Um, I. I believe he's, no, he's not from Ontario. I believe he's either BC or Alberta. Mm. I'm going to go with BC, though. Uh, He was on a trip for Germany um, with the boys. Because Canada recently went on a trip where we went to Germany, but the the girls went to one area of Germany and the guys went to another. This is recently, like a couple of months ago? Uh, Recently, yeah, as in, uh, I think. Probably... February, something okay. like that. It's pretty, pretty soon, recent. Tell us more about that. Where, where did you guys go? Where, where did you take um, we went to, I think it was Bad Blankenburg is where the girls went. And it was a very small town with um, just a training center. Bad Blankenburg? Bad Blankenburg. Wow. It's an interesting Talk about name. bad blinking for a burger. Or, uh, sorry, Bad Bing. Anyways, it's sorry, okay. carry on. Joke worked. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a very small town with just training. But there was a bunch of girls uh, to work with. And it was a big tournament. Mm. Um, and the guys, they went to a more populated area. I don't remember the name of the town. I don't think I could pronounce it either. Mm. And uh, that was also a huge tournament. Um, I think they had like six mats or something. And then we, after that, we had a training camp. Good experience all around for everyone? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a good experience. I was not able to compete or uh, do the camp because I had a knee injury at the time. Okay. But uh, if I was able to compete, I think I would have like, learned a lot from it too. Mm. And, uh, our girls did really well. Evelyn Beaton, um, yep. one of the, yeah, one of the daughters Alberta, right? of the Sunset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she actually uh, got first. Wow. And it was amazing because she's uh, actually, I think, 14 or 13 mm. so wow. she was the youngest of all of us and she got did the best and then asia douglas also one of the youngest got third yeah from toronto we've got hudson here in white versus williams in blue it's uh oh, canadian versus oh, an american 
American wastes no time with that. Gets the Epon. How would you describe his body language? Uh, just the way he's standing? Yeah, in terms of uh, what, what sort of emotion do you think he's... Uh, probably satisfaction he was just kind of like okay next um he wasted no time tired so. yeah maybe yeah, he's kind of yeah. swaggering a little bit yeah very relaxed american judo uh i it's, it's it's pretty relaxed when you get to the heavier weight classes it's just kind of mm. like okay we're gonna get this yeah. done with it's funny though because you the higher you're going weight the slower the the movement it is but then know? when they do go in for a throw so it's power. still snappy and then um they fall hard they do they yeah. do it makes a big Boom! Big sound. sound. Yeah, 100 kilos. When they get thrown, the big guys, like sure. it's 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 gonna be big. But it's funny because I find with the lighter weights, you see a higher volume of attacks and a mm -hmm. continuous war. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's back They're and forth. much it's scrappier. Yeah. Much scrappier. Um, definitely a lot of circling going on. Their gripping is very speedy. Mm -hmm. um, it's just. You could compare them, but at the same time, because the weights are so different, you can't. Because right. how could you say that like a, a 55 will do better than a 70 kilo if they were a 70 kilo with that specific way of judo? Would, mm -hmm. you, would you go faster? Would you manage to get more throws? Or would you just end up circling around them with a bunch of attacks and the 70 kilo is just more, um, steadfast and won't move? Mm. So it's like throwing a brick wall versus a moving, um, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think I, I know you. We, yeah, we know you where know you're what going. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're seeing Grant here in white versus Elizenberger in blue. Canada versus Canada. Here. Oh, this is Max Elizenberger's little brother. Huh. And Max, uh, which is which division? Um, uh, I think he's a 66. Uh, yeah, he's a 60. A lot of uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was about to say 50 kilo actually doesn't uh, isn't a weight class for tomorrow. It isn't. No, 50. Uh, there's no. 50 kilo for you, 21. On that two, the winner. Moving on to the under 50 semifinal. You win. Yeah, you're right. You mm -hmm. are right. Yep, that kilo, that got weight got rid of. One of my teammates wanted to fight it, and we're like, no, that's not a weight class. Hmm. Are there a lot of families in uh, in judo? Because you, you mentioned. Oh yeah. It? yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's also interesting because then you see the uh, sibling dynamics. Because then you have siblings that are doing great, siblings mm -hmm. that are doing not so great. And then um, on our team, the Burts, there's seven of them, and wow. each of them does judo. <laughs> yeah, some quit, some are still fighting. I wonder what they talk so a they lot of, you know, what, they, what the, the, the conversation's like at home. It must be a lot of judo oh, conversations. Canada. Here we've got Colin in white versus Ramirez in blue. blue. Canada, Canada versus uh, Mexico Canada. here. Oh, a Soto. Minority. That's my nationality. Have you, been, have you uh, competed in Mexico? Oh, well, uh, no, I have not, but my mom is Mexican, so I speak Spanish fluently and all nice. that. And you speak French, too? Uh, no, but I can understand it and read it pretty well. Right on. Are you in school in the U.S.? Are you, are you, uh, uh, yeah, I'm in high school in uh, Texas, but then I've also, <laughs> my schooling is, also, is consisted of Canadian schooling, um, British schooling, since I lived in Europe for a bit, and okay. then um, also California, Texas schooling. Because both are different for some reason. You're getting a lot of different uh, schooling. Yeah, I, I'm just repeating the word a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting. And then I want to go back to Canada for college. Oh, is university. that the plan, yeah? Yeah. Ramir is trying to grab oh. the, the back of the, the belt or the OB. Um, it's one nothing for Colin here. Oh, he's getting that. Nope. Because he, he grabbed the leg, he can't get the pin for Sankaku unless he gets the choke and gets a leg out. Trying to work to push that leg out. Yep. Not He's holding on to it pretty tight. Colin is not letting that one go. Are you comfortable with in, in the Niwaza? Uh, yeah, we work a lot of it back in my dojo. What percentile would you say most... Uh, clubs as far as how much they allocate for uh, stand-up to uh, ground fighting? Probably a 70-30 but the ground fighting it depends because um, it's different because when at the dojo we probably train like four minutes of uh, like four minute rounds of just fighting in Nawaza. but when you get to judo you don't have four minutes to fight so mm. the things you would use in there are different than the competition which is why a lot of people started drilling more 
um, okay, this person throws you this way, what are you going to do immediately after that happens? Mm. And then you just drill it until you get to competition and you don't have to think about which tool am I going to grab from my toolbox. You just grab it and go. Colin won that, uh, Colin won that match. Great effort by Ramirez, but uh, Colin gets it. We're moving on here to uh, another match here in the minus 55. We've got Stang in white from uh, from Canada and Christopher in blue from uh, Jamaica. As I mentioned before, we've got competitors from uh, over 10 countries here. Argentina, obviously Canada, Jamaica, Mexico, Portugal, the US, Puerto Rico, Russia, and Togo. We saw Stang, um, we saw Christopher fighting before. And uh, Put on a good effort here, but uh, let's see how he'll uh, handle the pressure from staying. Staying appears to be working potentially for a choke here from the back. Mm. Oh, that could have been bad. Or is he trying to isolate the arm for a long lock here? No. No, he's going to the choke, I think, again. Yeah. Trying to get a control of the towel. What's your go-to submission? From Canada. Ooh, is there I a particular? Know. I don't know if I want to say that live. <laughs> Fair enough, you don't have to. <laughs> but uh, most Canadians do go for a lot of Sankaku. It's, it's really common. Oh, is that a standard sort of uh, Canadians or... <gasps> I don't, I mean, I haven't, I'm not, I don't think it's like taught as that, but because we all go to the same national training camps and it's been shown so often, a lot of people hit it. Hmm. Just as a turnover, a choke, as a pin, anything. It's just a staple. It's versatile, yeah? Mm hmm. It works in many different ways. Are you, f do you know Sting? I do not. He's a, oh, he's a 55, yeah. Actually, I think this one, I don't know if this one's a U16 or something. Now we've got a lot of young competitors here. Like U14, U16, U16. Yeah. Well, oh. oh, did he get it? Did he just get the Epon? Christopher got the Epon here. The Jamaicans are very happy. There's a few of them here, but uh, you can hear them cheering. You can hear the enthusiasm here. We'll, we'll check out the replay and, and you, you'll, you'll lead us through that, uh, Alex. Okay. Sur le tapis, on that one. Semi-finals, the moins de 81 kilo. Under 81 kilo semi-final. Fighting in white from Canada, Peyton Harris. Posing in blue from Canada, Benjamin Burke. Coming soon, anymore. <laughs> oh, Ooh, I guess not. God boot. We've got God boot in white versus Miku in uh, blue. You know God boot? Um, I know his sister. Um, actually, I don't. Maybe this is. I don't know if it's they're related or not, but. If they are, um, there's another person, Corley Godboot. She's a 78 plus kilo, and she'll be competing in this tournament as well as the Grand Prix. And she's tall, right? She's oh, tall she's competitor. very tall. Yeah. Three minutes of golden score. Emma Caldwell. Competitor. So the uh, the Grand Prix, the Montreal Grand Prix, is happening awesome. next weekend. Are you going to be there? Uh, I will not be competing, no. Um, I have multiple friends that are, but I will not. <laughs> are you, are you going to be tuning in and, and watching? Um, I'm definitely going to be tuning in from home. Um, I can't stay to watch, sadly, but that's probably what I'm going to be doing when I'm not training once I get back home. Oh, Miku. this guy's jumping for the high Yeah, grip. I know. They're very aggressive, eh, this Miku? Yeah. Oh, he just tried to shake it off, but he ended up dropping those knees. Can you get a Shido here? No. God boots. I don't think that's. Yeah, they're not related in no. that case. This boy is very. pretty small for 73.
but he's definitely controlling gripping pretty well. Oh. No? He's got that high grip. Yeah. You're right, he is small for, uh, he was much uh, smaller and lighter than him. Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing with judo. You got a lot of different body types, and there's right. some people that you definitely wouldn't peg them to be that certain weight class. Oh, he's got a bit of a limp going on. Uh, he's going to get a shido definitely. eventually. It's uh, illegal to push that arm over. Let's see if the ref... Uh, you can do a grip break, but if not... Yeah, yep. there we go. He appears to be somewhat injured or might have strained his shoulder. Yeah, his, yeah. he seems to be touching his shoulder and definitely uh, he was walking a little bit weird. Doesn't seem to be very stable. How common are injuries generally in, co in, in competition? Uh, in competition, I'd have to say that it's, it's as you get to higher competition, you don't get injuries as often in the sense that like you have really qualified people so they know how to throw you correctly right. probably the worst is uh worst injuries i've seen is like a bad arm bar or a throw where somebody fell wrong or oddly mm. um just because you're trying to twist out at these throws you're trying not to get thrown right. so you right. end up posting your arm on the mat and then breaking but isn't that a big yeah. no-no like that is a big no-no you never want to post but if you also don't want to get thrown on your shoulder for a wazari right people start to post um and it's, it's not something you can get her uh shidoed for or hansoko make for right. unless somehow you're posting and like punching them in the face um so and really that, it's just at your own risk and that can put you off for quite some time yeah but uh oh yeah definitely and then um funny thing about judo is that also fingers and toes mm. that's a big thing because um if you have a broken finger it's really hard to grip at all right And like, as you can see, gripping is really integral with judo because this oh, guy yes. is getting out gripped with that high grip every single time. He can't throw a single one of his attacks. Yeah, it, it appears as though Miku is dominating that on, on, on the grip on the gripping yeah. side. See, of things. even though uh, Godboot grabbed his sleeves because Miku put his hands over the sleeves, he's mm -hmm. now controlling him. And then you're left with White trying to move to get rid of him. Very technical eh, and just situational here. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Uh, yeah, that's Hansuko Make. It. Yeah. It's his last shido. Well, good effort by Godboot, but it uh, looks like it's going to go to Miku. Yep. It's interesting they didn't throw him, though. Mm. Yeah. So you're saying, sorry? Oh, I, I was saying... Um, um, that it was interesting that Miko didn't throw him with that high grip because he had plenty of opportunities for an Osoto. Yeah, well, what happened there? Do you think he was just, he knew he could just out, out, you know, to dominate by just out gripping him? And um, with shorter people, what sometimes ends up being the thing is that with Osoto, you can have, if you come in um, too high or you don't bend your knee in order to propel yourself to get that power for the Osoto, you can also get countered. Mm. Um, and that's the thing about Osoto. If you don't have the right pull to get them off, they're just kind of standing there, and you have their leg on their leg, and all they have to do is lift your leg up and ch uh, change the angle a little bit, and then you're going flying for an e-palm. We've seen that, actually, in the previous matches earlier on, that sort of uh, situation. Here. Are people over-committing with, with certain throws? And oh, it's also a factor of under-committing, because if you under-commit, then... Um, you're left in this weird position where you're trying to get out of your throw, mm. but they can counter you while you're doing that. All right, up next we've got Bakhtiyor versus Belanger. Bakhtiyor and Whitey, the American versus Belanger in blue, the Canadian. Wow. Jimmy Pedro is here coaching uh, the American here. Back to your second semifinal under 81 kilo on that one from Canada. NY Taylor Altaus. Do you know this competitor? I do not. Alexander Nas. 
Ooh. Gonna be going for a bow and arrow choke here. <laughs> it seems that uh, they've tried to tape over the names on the geese. On uh, back yeah. to yours? Oh yeah. Uh, if you can see his uh, oh, yeah. tape has fallen off. I was talking to one of the girls earlier and they said they were having to exchange geese because uh, some of the boys didn't bring the correct ones. Yikes, they forgot their geese. Well, it depends because you have to be IGF approved too. Right, so right, you could bring right. a gi and even though it might fit um, the parameters perfectly, if it's not IGF approved, then you, you can't, can't wear it. Right. Or if the patches are sewn on incorrectly. Or standards that they have to uh, adhere to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-oh. What happens now? Oh, I think they're just going to continue fighting. Don't worry, folks. We're, we're still uh, going to refer to him by his real name. Back to your not uh, Adorno. I don't know. I think we spoke to Ariane Adorno yesterday. She's from so the, the Northeast, oh. from New York. Yeah, a lot of the 24 comes from around yeah, there. Yeah. Fighting from Canada, in white, Kira Wesley. I guess Project 2024 as in Fighting the 24, uh, 2024 Olympics. So that's yes. The third tent. yes, that's what it was named after. They come to a lot of uh, American like national tournaments and stuff like that, hand out t-shirts, tell you about the program. Ah, hmm. uh, nope. Yeah. I guess trying uh, to lure him, are you trying to lure him into some Niwaza action potentially. Yeah? Uh, trying to go for um, Tomonage. Uh, Tomonage, yeah, and then I think after that he was trying to stretch him out to keep him away from his legs to make sure he didn't pass guard. But it seemed the guy got clipped. Belanger still in this one. We're almost under two minutes here, zero zero. Twenty nineteen Canada Cup. I'm joined by a competitor here. Oh, oh. Alex Lafour. Lafour, right? Oh uh, yeah. It's yes. As in the strong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's competing here? She's already won a match and oh, bone arrow choke. No. No, no, his legs in the wrong position. So I guess he was just showing his ability to somersault over his opponent there. It's quite an ability. He's, uh, Belanger's up a point here, Hapo Wazari. It's the lefty versus righty situation. That's always difficult. Are you a lefty or righty? I'm a lefty, so I encounter that a lot. Or they're opposite, yep. It's difficult because you have to reach over and a lot of moving to make sure that you set your opponent up correctly or else they're just going to take you straight back. Almost under a minute here, and uh, you can see Jimmy Pedro speaking to... Uh, to his uh, athlete there, back to your. After a few times of seeing the same fighters compete, you can kind of tell their same uh, sequence of attacks, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm sure, you know, a lot of these competitors know each other so well, you, you know, you, you can kind of read what, or have a general expectation of what mm -hmm. to expect as far as gripping strategies. Yeah. I mean, the thing with judo is that it's not necessarily that you know every single throw perfectly. It's just that at the, the highest competitors, they have like three throws that no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to beat them. Mm. And, and how does one build that, uh, that capability to have such such high effective, such um, a high, high effective throw? I mean, I, I wouldn't know personally because I'm not at that level of, <laughs> uh, like I can just throw anybody on demand, but um, from what I've seen from my coach, uh, it's just practicing perfect technique every single time, always committing. I don't think I've ever seen my coach do a single uchikomi that wasn't um, always like had the pull correct, had every uh, full commitment, like 
committed to every single movement. So no slacking whatsoever. No on slacking. No. Oh. There's no gentle Uchikomi. Mm. Belanger gets it. And uh, I guess he's the hometown favorite here in this matchup here. Mm. That's interesting. No, no, you know, you're, you're talking about how every, Uchi, every Uchikomi counts in every attempt. Is, uh, every, every time you practice it incorrectly, you're just causing like yourself more problems, is how mm. my coach would probably say it. You're working against yourself. Yeah, you're working against yourself. If you're practicing um, gripping that might not be what you want to use in competition, you shouldn't be practicing it because mm. then you're going to do that in competition. But uh, saying that, it's harder to do than right. just, yeah. It's very difficult to make sure that you pull every single repetition because you get tired. <laughs> We've got Andreas in white here versus uh, Gardner in blue. We've seen both of these competitors fight, both Andrus and, and Gardner, earlier today. Both competitors looking very focused here. Something tells me they're very familiar with each other. Yeah, they fight each other a lot. Gardner is securing his hooks. But uh, let's see if uh, Andres allows him to, to employ anything here. Huh? Haven't seen many chokes, rear naked chokes here. Uh, it's definitely hard to hit them sometimes because like while you get them people tend to tuck in their chin really uh, hard quickly mm -hmm. um, and then you're pressuring on the face and if you pressure on the face then the ref is going to stop it right. versus lapel chokes where it's much easier to he's got it cranked does he have it cranked yeah. Alex what do you think uh, I think he's got it but I think he's holding on too I can't see if it's over the chin or not oh he adjusted Oh, oh. He's going for a clock joke. No, nope. okay, he's just getting Still off. Still in it? Wow. Oh, that guy. That yeah, resiliency, eh? Yeah, people hold on for dear life. And then when they adjust the way they did, sometimes if you're being choked, you get a little breath of air, and then you're choked again. And that gives you just enough to keep going. How do you not panic in those sorts of situations? How do you remain? Like, what, what do you guys... Oh! You hear the pop from the crowd. How, how, do, how, do, how do you, you know, not freak out? And like, you know, I'm getting, you're losing air, right? Oh, I mean, you just get so used to it. And then sometimes you don't freak out because you're already passed out. <laughs> wow, there you go. Well said. Looks like Andres is trying to isolate that yeah, arm he's there. He's got the leg. Is he double wristing that? Is this uh, Udigarami on the other, on the arm? Or? No, I don't think so. He'd have to be able to twist his hips more, and he's not able to because he's got that leg stuck on the mat. Andres finds enough time to fix his hair while he's, he's getting up. Oh, so is my from class. One nothing for Andres. Oh, Gardner shido. gets the shido there. Forward movement there gets it. Gets the Osikomi. Trying to apply it. Will he be able to will he be able to hold on to him here? Nope. Uh -huh. Not gonna happen. Gardner can't plant that one. Oh, he's got the leg again so that he can't switch over. We're under a minute here. So, uh, one was already a piece. Yeah, go in the golden score. 
Oh, you think they're definitely going to go and score? No, it might, but uh, I don't know because the thing is, uh, they're both pretty twitchy. So, judging from the fact he did that switch a little bit ago, he could pull something out of nowhere. That's uh, is that the one you're talking about? No. No, it's a different competitor. Okay, sorry. Under 30 seconds here. A lot of uh, fired up audience members here, supporters, coaches, and fellow teammates at the Pierre Charbonneau Centre cheering for their uh, teammates. How important is that for morale of uh, judokas on the uh, uh, Teammates, it can really help a lot. Because at the end of the day, uh, the, one of the worst feelings, I think, ever is when you walk on and they're cheering the other person's name and you can't hear anything. That's, that's a horrible feeling in judo. Um, but when it's you, it's, it's really quite helpful. Because it's like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I'm going to win. And then you just go in and knock it out. Well, we just, uh, oh. re referee just removed that. Made an that, interesting uh, call. Okay. Still not a Han Sakamaki, though, so we're going to go and go and score. Yep. As you predicted, we're, we're going to go and score. So it, it really works against the, uh, the competitors, eh, when they're walking out and they feel like they're drowned. Wow. Yeah, because you get nervous and uh, nerves kick in, and when you're nervous and on adrenaline, you can do really stupid stuff. True. Golden score. Who's going to get it? Gardner or Andreas? Canada versus Canada here in Montreal. The 2019 Canada Cup. No. Managed to block it. Call Shido for Corin. Possibly. Ooh. No? Okay. Oh, goodness. Usually in Golden Score, once uh, once you have two Shidos and you see that symbol of you to fix your geese, you yeah. know it's over. That's a horrible uh, moment, right? When yeah. You, 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 there's a suspension there. De it, well, I mean, you already know, but then it's even, the suspense kicks in when you both have two Shidos. And then it's a whole uh, fight of who was more defensive or who yeah. bro did it more. Oh, is this it? I think so, eh? Is this... Is this mm, I don't know. So the night, because the thing is, when the gi goes out fully, then you have to tell them to fix it. Golden score. Okay, great. Yeah. Even though it's still not on the back. Oh no, the, this is it. Yeah, yep. there we go. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Andrus is first. Yeah. Yeah, okay. he's he's not out. Come on, Corn. It's Corn from Alberta. Uh, BC. 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 He goes to Nanaimo Judo, I think. Oh, uh, bridge, but still got that pressure. Oh, he's, he's going to have to there. Look at the intensity. Corn planted that choke. Beautiful finish by Corn Gardner. Excellent show of uh, respect to your sportsmanship. That was a good match. Well, Alex, thank you very much for, for joining us on the commentary, and no feel problem. free to swing by later if you want. But you'll be competing, so all the best in your, yep. in your uh. competition. We're joined by Alex LaFour. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right, folks, that was uh, Alex uh, Lafour, who is a competitor here. She lives in uh, the U.S., but she's Canadian, and she's competing at the 2019 Canada Cup. You're joining us live here, judocanada.tv, live on TV Go. Our sponsors include the Federal Government of Canada, Le Gouvernement du Québec, La Ville de Montréal, Tourisme Montréal, TKNL, EC30, Savvy, Atashda, and Isam. All these great sponsors have made this uh, event uh, possible. So, um, so we thank them, of course. We're here, as I mentioned, at the Pierre Charbonneau Centre for the Canada Cup. And today we've got the IGF Cadet Competition, which is actually a continental, uh, the Pan American Cup. So, uh, a lot is at stake for, our, for these competitors. They're coming in from all over the world. Canada, Argentina, Canada, Chile, the U.S., Cuyaboto. Jamaica, Mexico, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Russia, and Togo. I'm going to try to get some other guests to, to come on here and uh, to, to come on and, and do some uh, some talking, do some commentating. Here we've got uh, Sosedo versus uh, Bachador, and we've seen Bachador win two solid uh, matches via Uchimara. Very calm, very focused uh, judo competitor. And Sosedo has uh, also been on, uh, has had a good day here today. Going in deep. Manages, uh, Bachador manages to get to Ozori. So Sedo trying to go in there for an attack, potentially leaving himself overexposed there so with that uh, wide stretch. I'm going to try to get some uh, other competitors to come on here. Anyone want to come do some commentary? Anybody? You want to come? Yeah. Uh, do you want to do your cool with English? Huh? Tu peux le faire en anglais? Okay, on, 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 va, on va faire en français. Oh non, c'est bon, on peut parler en... Uh... All right, so we're joined, uh, on est ici avec Coralie. Coralie, uh, ton nom de famille? Godbou. Godbou, oui. Alors, uh, c'est Sucedo uh, contre Bachelor. Ah là, c'est Moonjin. Tu le connais, uh, Bachelor, oui? Euh, ouais, je connais Moonjin euh, du Canada. Je connais pas le Mexicain, par exemple. Alors, Bachelor a gagné ce, ce match avant avec euh, deux Uchimata. Comment on se forme euh, physiquement et techniquement. Mm. Alors, comment va la compétition aujourd'hui pour toi? Euh, moi, je ne me compétitionne pas. Je ne compétitionne pas aujourd'hui, je compétitionne demain. OK. Fait que c'est demain la compétition. Ce soir, c'est la pesée, puis demain, c'est la compétition. Puis l'atmosphère ici, peux-tu nous euh, décrire comment est-ce que c'est là? Oui, c'est une bonne atmosphère en ce moment. Euh, en ce moment, je suis surprise quand même. Il euh, n'y a pas tant de monde, mais demain, je crois que ça va être une plus grosse journée. Il va y avoir mm. beaucoup de monde. C'est une bonne place, c'est une belle place. On a une belle vue pour voir, le, pour voir les, les combats. On voit bien, euh, à comparer à certains euh, emplacements, mm -hmm. c'est bien fait. On est ici au, uh, Pierre, Char au Pierre Charbonneau Centre. Ouais. Puis il uh, y a trois three mats going on. Il y a beaucoup d'action, beaucoup d'action judo. Puis. Um, On peut voir le Mexicain. Il vient d'avoir une pénalité. On a des compétiteurs uh, des judoka de partout du monde, du Mexique. Du, du ouais, Mexique. on a beaucoup, c'est panaméricain, donc. Euh, mm. On a des, j'ai vu Argentine, j'ai vu Mexique, euh, Pérou, Jamaïque. Oh, la, 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 Pérou aussi? Oui, ouais. j'ai vu le Pérou. Okay. Ah. 
As-tu eu la chance de, de faire la compétition de All Road du Canada? Euh, moi, j'ai eu la chance d'aller en Argentine, au Brésil, j'étais au Mexique, j'étais en Europe aussi. Hmm. J'étais euh, en Allemagne, j'étais en, en France, j'étais en Italie, en Espagne. J'ai fait, euh, fait quand même beaucoup de places. Ouais, tu as, as nommé beaucoup de, de pays. Si tu... <rire> ouais. ouais. Alors, c'est quel ton, ton pays euh, favori? préféré? Oui, préféré pour, euh, euh, pour la compétition. Pour l'instant, mon, mon pays préféré, ça a été le Brésil. Hmm. J'ai adoré le Brésil. Ou sinon... Euh, L'Espagne, c'est beau aussi. Mmh. Qu'est-ce que tu as, qu 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 as aimé au Brésil? Au Brésil? Ouais. Euh, L'ambiance, la compétition, les gens. Les gens sont super gentils. Mmh. Les compétiteurs sont forts aussi. Il y a des très, très bons compétiteurs. Oh. Bad Stores got it. Il continue avec euh, le mouvement. Ouais. Puis euh, il gagne. Il est très fort. Il est, quand il attaque, il reste collé énormément sur euh, l'adversaire. Donc l'adversaire n'a pas le choix de continuer à, mm. à, à tourner. Bonne technique. Hein? Il, vient, il habite ici à Montréal? Il habite à Montréal. Il vient de, du club Shidoka. Ah oh, ouais. Et toi, tu es dans quel club? Moi, je suis de Vieille Capitale, à Québec. Oh, right, 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 right. Le gagnant, en finale chez les moins de 73 kilos. Mais Moonjin a été nominé comme... Euh, un des meilleurs euh, U16 euh, de sa catégorie euh, pour cette année. Wow. Ici au Canada. Ouais, au judo, par Judo Canada. Ouais. Donc là, ouais, Mounjin s'en va en finale d'or. Ah, un Canada. Victor Goujon-Gazé. Victor Goujon-Gazé vient aussi de, du club Shido Camp. Okay. Il a fini premier au Jeu du Canada cette année. Hmm. Euh, euh, L'année passée aussi? Cette année, en, au mois de... C'était fin février. Okay. Le jeu du Can Canada Game. Oh, right, 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 ok. okay. Puis, connais-tu uh, Heitman? Um, Je pense qu'il qu vient de. I saw him before, but I don't know his judo mm. that well. Je pense qu'il vient de la Colombie-Britannique. I think. Je sais que Victor est très fort euh, physiquement. What's more important, uh, strength or technique, in your opinion? Um, I mean, I think, both are important. Yeah, right, both are important, but like, if you don't have the strength, you can't do your technique. If oh, really? Person, yeah? But I think, yeah, hmm. because like, the the person beside you, if she's too strong, and you, like, she's more strong than you, she's just gonna block you. Mm. You can do your technique, but like, it's more difficult. If you have a, if you're strong, But you need, if you're strong, you need technique because right. if you're doing nothing, you're gonna have cheeto. Right. So. Alors, est-ce que tu es prêt pour la compétition demain? Ouais, selon ouais. moi, ouais. Ça fait, je m'entraîne énormément. Donc, euh, la dernière compétition s'est bien passée. Les nationaux se sont bien passés, mais reste que. C'est une journée, c'est une nouvelle journée à chaque jour. Donc, il euh, faut être prêt, il faut se coucher tôt. J'espère que ça va bien passer parce que j'ai les grands prix moi la semaine prochaine. Oh wow, tu, tu, tu fais la compétition là-bas? Ouais. Wow, okay. Donc, euh, c'est important de bien performer ici pour après ça arriver là-bas prêt, bien préparé. Jean Gaz a dit au Sankomi. Sankaku. Est-ce que c'est ta première euh, compétition comme un grand prix? Un euh, grand prix, ouais. Wow, ok. Seniors, yeah, it's my first. Wow, interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be big. And the ca my category is huge. Hmm. Which one is 70? I'm plus 78. 70, okay, wow. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Est-ce que c'est du. Uh, is it excitement? Is it nerves? Is it. It's totally new, so. Hmm. I don't know. It's like I'm excited, but it's nervous too. Like, the girls, they are really strong. Like, in my categories, I have the girl who won the, in London. Like, yes, the uh, Brazilian? Yeah, no, she's from, a, she's a Cuban. Oh, yes, Cuban. Ortiz. Ortiz. Ortiz, yes. Yeah, uh, Dallas Ortiz. she's going to be there. Oh, and I, I know I have two Japanese in my categories, too. Wow, that's, a me that's an awesome yeah. uh, so opportunity. It's, you know? Yeah, it's going to be really hard, but at the same time, I'm going to have the opportunity to put my hands on her. That's like, it, that's it. And w what does that mean for you? Like, what, uh, But, like, you know? it's a... You know, like if I if I want only one, it can be like it's really important. Like, 
it's gonna be because it's seniors mm -hmm. and I'm only the first year junior so mm -hmm. they are they are older than me so right if you're, I can you're 20 or 21 I'm 18. Oh, you're 18. Wow. Okay. Oh, but I know I'm U you 21, but right. I, like uh, I just had 18. Right. Okay. One month ago. Wow. You just t t t just uh, t t on anniversary. Exactly. Wow. Okay. I think we just uh, assume you guys should. Colin. Yeah. Beautiful. I hope we see I that replay. I know him. You know Colin? Yeah. Is it T for Tyler, Colin? Mm. I saw his judo. Oh. Oh wait. It's uh, Chrisos Tomo who got that Ipon, American judoka here, coached by Jimmy Pedro. You said they were strong. Yeah, they, like they, the team is good. Yeah, they brought a lot of people here today. Yeah. Check out the replay here. I think it, yeah, he's going to group Oh, yeah, he just slide. Oh, right. yeah, that was a big Ipon. Using uh, his... He had uh, the rib, he had the control with the back, yeah, and yeah. he just slide. That's cool that uh, you're going to be competing at, uh, well, you know, at, at this Grand Prix. Do you know how many other members of the team? I think the last time I saw, we was like uh, 15. Mm. It's not that big. It's not that big? No, though? like um, normally, like example for the girl in like 63, normally they are like 40. Oh, you mean within your division? Yeah, oh, right, for right, my right. division, it's, it's not that big, but right. like for s small yeah, divisions, yeah, 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 like yeah. maybe like 63, there are going to be like 50. Right, right. More and more competitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me in Canada, it's big because normally we are like seven. Right. Yeah. Wow. Double the amount. Do you, ha do you have like, you, so you have seven solid, how many people do you have in Quebec City? Like in Quebec City? Yeah, in your home dojo. Um, of my categories? Yeah. Zero. Zero. Eh? Like in Quebec, like all the Quebec, mm -hmm. I think we are like three. Wow. Maybe. Mm. That are competing at this level. Oh, at my level? Yeah. I'm the only one. Wow, interesting. And so like in Canada, we are like what, two, three? Wow. Maybe. Wow, wow, wow. We are not that much. And but it's good you get to train with different, uh, you know, the different. Like for the different. for the Olympics to Tokyo, we have mm -hmm. we don't have a person in plus for the girl. Right. Is that your oh, goal down the road? Oh. I know Felix. This one. Bertrand? It's a Felix Olivier Bertrand. He's from Quebec. He's got that. He's uh, strong. Oh, you have the. He's really fast. He's got the Jamaican Christopher hooked. And uh, he wins via via Osekome. Yeah. So what are others telling you about uh, next uh, next week there the Montreal Grand Prix? What's uh, what's the? But I have uh, I have like two versions like because I'm really small mm -hmm. for the like the categories. Mm -hmm. I'm like. A, 79 80 and it's plus so like i know some girls they are the double of me what? yeah really? once i had the like girl who know i they are like 162 the french girl wow, wow, she's wow. like 162 kilos for real yeah damn but, and i'm like 80 79 so Jesus. it's gonna be another challenge like yeah how, how are you okay how currently how are you going to deal with that sort of predicament that sort of situation but you know, what's like, the plan i mean without telling us yeah like you know you know when i'm fighting with like girl who are more heavy than me yeah like it's hard to move them because like they are so strong mm -hmm. so like and often they are like more tall than me mm -hmm. maybe and like the girls who's like 162 yeah i know she's more tall than me so and you're tall, aren't you? Like, I know. Like you're I'm tall. like I'm like five ten. Right. But like they are very mo like they have maybe like one head and a half, maybe. Above you. Yeah. So in that sort of s s scenario, wh what are coaches telling you as as in tactically? Well, what sort of strategy? It's move, because like when on. yeah, because like when you move, they are not necessarily stable. Mm -hmm. So. And like the, it's easily to throw like when they are not like, because when they're fixed, they're strong. Right. So, 
I need to move them, but it's hard. It took me like energy to. So, and often they don't have like a lot of cardio. Mm. But. So you, you you're gonna exploit yeah. that. You're going to use. But like yeah, the next week it's gonna be like uh, oh that was good. Oh, I, I don't think know I if he did a wasery like. What did he do? He did a ma a makikomi. I think it was oh. like a. Soto Makomi. Nice. Uh, hopefully they'll get there. I know him. Later. He's training with me some at the ENS, Yuri. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this one. The white one. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've seen a lot of uh, Semenyak today. He's been yeah. been fighting a lot. I think he has some problem with like with his game. Who Semenyak? No, uh yeah. Because like he don't have his gear, he have the gear of uh, Victor Gujangazi. Oh right, I see, I see a lot of people have. I, I guess um, uh, Alex Lafour was mentioning before that it's because they don't. Um, yeah, they don't fit. Or they don't have the IGF standard. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot it, of rules in judo. Eh? Yeah, and because like here, it's um, it's like a Panam, so we need to have the back patch. Mm -hmm. But like often the people they don't necessarily have because they're it's 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 gonna be like the first competitions like international like uh, pan am so yeah. it's a lot of rules and i'm sure it costs a lot too right? yeah like me i know my mom my brother uh, do the competition today mm -hmm. and like i know my mom yesterday at midnight was like uh brawling like uh the back patch oh, no way. yeah <laughs> that's cool Mom is supporting. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, you, your brother, I uh, think he, we saw another Godbu today. Yeah, it's my brother, okay. like, yeah, Xavier Godbu. Because uh, uh, Alex Lafour and I were, were commentating during his match, and she was like, yeah. oh, is that, is that her? Yeah, it was know. my brother. Oh. I yeah, that. it's done. That was a good one. Got the sweep there, I believe it was. You just swept the leg. Well, great effort uh, by Miku, but Semenyak wins this one. And he's so small for 73 kilos. Like, he's, yeah, he's uh, like, he's big with his shoulder, mm -hmm. but like, he's so small, he's like. Like, in terms of height? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you look at him, you think it's like a 66 or something like that, 60. But he's, he's making it work for him, maybe. Eh? Yeah, being because he has a judo for a 73. He's got. He, yeah, his judo, mm -hmm. he's for 73. Because so you're saying, but by division, everyone uh, like yeah, is a yeah, we style. can see by with the division, like the judo is different. Hmm. Like when you're really like when you are heavy, yeah, the more you're heavy, more it's gonna be like strong and like uh, power base. Exactly, yeah. Hmm. And more you when you're smaller, it's gonna be really fast. It's really technical, and it's gonna we can see like just the difference. Ah. Look how it's like more faster. Right. The exchange of movement is really more fun. Oh, like, he's going to choke it. Bow and arrow uh. attempt here by Shenki on Floyd. We've seen Floyd. Uh, is he, he tapping? Ha he have the, no, oh, he have the. Over his chin. Yeah, I have the chin. On peut pas faire ça, eh? No. So that's why, and that's why we're doing, like. Right, doing you're, you're pointing it yeah. to the ref, right. It's hurting so much. I bet, I bet. When we have the chin, it's worse than a choke. Really? Eh? Yeah. You because find like they took the, you have like the, the teeth. Yes, yes. And all that pressure on, yeah. on the jaw for sure. Yeah. And when, because often you're gonna have the mouth too. I know some people like the mouth just like pop out. Are you serious? Yeah, because it was too strong. Wow. You and it was not capable so to, to like move. Mm -hmm. So they just. The mouth just puff out. So the, their actual jaw popped out. Yeah, up. exactly. Yeah. That amount of pressure oh, is yeah. exerted, eh? Oh, yeah. Fascinating. Do you think some When you think you have the choke, you just... Crank it. Crank it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't okay. necessarily care where you're putting the... Yeah. It's competition, though. I mean, people get into the zone. They want to win. And it's not looking like that. But, like, in the real life, when you're fighting, like... They are, you are more mean, like you are mean when you're of fighting. Yeah. You know if something you can't necessarily doing it, but some people they're gonna do it just for to 
put you in a uncomfortable like positions. Exactly to make it so di uncomfortable yeah. that and you're not gonna necessarily see like yeah. the ref they don't necessarily see because it's too like it's kind of a it's gray area it's hidden, exactly yeah? yeah interesting oh, oh there yeah. it is uh, sorry maybe I didn't not necessarily see come oh yeah it's a sorry thank yeah. goodness I thought they weren't gonna award that I'm like come on. But the thing I can see today is the ref are good. Like sometimes, like they do many mistakes, but today, really the ref, they are good. That's good, that's good to hear. Usually uh, when you say, um, you're saying the refs are inconsistent sometimes? Yeah, because sometimes. like sometimes, um, you know, I did like two panels, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes they just do like many mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like, come, uh, quite, come, uh, example, uh, they're going to call something, they're going to take off, uh, they're going to call a shido, they're going to take off. But it's for us, when we're fighting, it's can be a, it can do a big difference. Like when we giving you a point yeah. and we take it yeah. off and oh we're yeah. giving you again or a shido. When you have two shido and like or one and they give you, you have only one. If they're going to give you another one, you have really more pressure. Right. Then, like when you have only one, you know. Yeah. And yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. putting two, you give it one. You have a wazari, you don't have it. Right. The back and forth really messes with one's yeah. composure. Yeah. You know, right? example me in my final in, at nationals when I won, I did um. Uh, I did a kosoto and they call it ipon, mm -hmm. but me. I didn't like. I know it wasn't. So mm. I just conserved the osai komi, but okay. the girls, beside me. Like she thinked it was finished, uh. so she just like dropped his body, right. and me I just like conserve it, and they changed the ipon for wasari, wow. so we continue. Wh but she just like, if she was just get out of the cycle me, she mm. had the times because me I just like take off my leg because she had my legs, right. and I just take off, and I did my osaiko me, and they switch it for wasari if she just like react mm -hmm. differently because she was thinking it was finished hmm. she can maybe won the match right. after right it's only a rosary and she had won before so you know that's nuts that is uh it, all, all it takes is that one sort of shift yeah. so and that's uh, that's why when like sometimes when ref doing many mistakes it can really play on like the mental during the fight and it can do a difference. How do you? How does one stay? Because example, um, you know when you have a point. Example, if we can see on this fight, yeah. Floyd he have a wazari. Right. Imagine if you take off the wazari now. You tell him you don't have it. <laughs> oh man. He have 11 seconds now. We think he's gonna win, but if you take off the the points. That's now he needs to do something else. He yeah. needs to think. Now he, yeah, we can see. He defends. He's only in defense. Mm -hmm. He's not going to try to attack for right. maybe do a mistake. But. But so you're telling me you've seen refs actually call off. Ooh, but like it can happen. It can right, happen. It can happen right. But when it's happened, like maybe three times in a fight. Yeah. Oh, in one fight. Oh, yeah, in one fight. Are you serious? Yeah, me, I saw like three times take off a Cheeto. Wow. Like they had. Um, where was this? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, Cecilia Usa. Where, which, which, where was it? Which city? Uh, was it here? Uh, was it? it was. It was my last international. It was. You in said Pan Am, so. No, no, it wasn't the Pan Am, but like it was in Europe. I think it was in, uh, in Portugal. Wow. Something okay. like that. There was, he. It was boys, I think, and he have one shido. Uh -huh. They give him a second shido. They okay. take off the shido. After he did the wazari, he take off the w they take off the wazari, mm -hmm. and he did the shido. He had another shido, and after he did the third shido, and they take off the shido. Wow! And I think it's the other one who won with the epon, something like that. But you know, yeah. like in the mental, in the mental, it's can like completely. Uh, flip your world upside down and yeah. confuse you and irritate you yeah it's uh, counterproductive for sure but you know at the same time a ref it can like it can happen a bad day it's like sure it's a, it's a tough job no yeah it's really hard it's yeah. really hard because often you just like you don't necessarily know it's it can be weird so mm -hmm. but yeah 
it's like it's like it's you can have a bad day but sometimes it's just like it's really be, bad yeah. yeah 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 i guess it, it takes a lot of uh mental preparation yeah, exactly. to, ladies and gentlemen to, to last remain calm fight of the qualifying and you know round, like when a ref he's doing a mistake mm -hmm. he has so much pressure yeah. because i did before oh you ref yeah i did during my maybe finals. one year one year and a half but mm -hmm. provincial like yeah and when you're doing a mistake you have so much pressure after yeah. because you don't want to do it so if you're not like if you're reacting like a badly mm -hmm. you can do in like more pressure m but multi like more mistake yeah it, it, it's it's stressful all around oh, for, yeah. for the referees because then because they you're know the only one in the math right yeah it is the tough it is the toughest i think worst job too because yeah. say, like all it takes is as you're describing a series of bad calls and you can oh, yeah. unintentionally like really ruin yeah. someone's and uh, it's if you if you you think it's a good thing but like the two judges like at the table they think it's not yeah. it's you you need to change the decision if, yeah but you don't have a say it's it's, uh, yeah. it's it's yeah. written over right exactly yeah. but before like maybe like 10 years ago mm -hmm. we had like there was two, three right yeah like three with, two in the corner yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and but one got in the rid of that and yeah now it's I think now with just only one, you have more stress. Okay, uh, w we'll actually do that now. We'll take a pause if you don't mind, so I could do some uh, quick video interviews. Is that cool? Hello. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. So we're here with uh, Coralie Godbu, who will be competing tomorrow uh Coralie, uh in preparation for tomorrow you you spoke about you know what it means to be competing and you're competing tomorrow and then you're competing next week at your first ever first ever montreal grand prix that's a lot of competition in the span of one week yeah a lot but i think it's gonna be okay like um I'm living after one week and a half after I'm going in Europe. I'm going okay. Yeah, I'm going in the Republic Czech and uh, Berlin for, for competitions too. For more? Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. You guys are always traveling. You're always busy. Yeah, because we had to. Like, example, for me, I need to do my standard for the world mm. if I want to go. Now, 